Okay, well, we're back now from our break, and we will kick off the Q&A with none other than Tom Shippey. Okay, well, um, let me say that I think the important thing about both these books <coughs> is they take us back to the original material, and this is not very well known. And that is uh, unfortunate in a way, because there are some things that are very well known. Um, there is, uh, uh, at large, in the Western world, a kind of pop familiarity with Norse mythology and with the kind of concepts we're discussing. So uh, 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 Stephen's book is Woden, a historical companion. Historical companion. Uh, do I need uh, uh, Stephen's book? Well, not really. I mean, I've got the children of Odin. Yep. I've got um, Odin's girl. Okay. Um, I've got um, the sword of Loki. And these are just books I happen to have to hand. If I actually produced my entire um, bibliography of such things, there'd be a lot more. So uh, there is, in fact, already uh, an image of Odin, which is well known and well circulated. He's really, he's really Gandalf with one eye, yeah. um, and also a rather nasty, uh, 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 not perhaps as genial a figure as Gandalf. But th this pop familiarity has actually kind of taken over, and. <laughs> it's a problem to know where it comes from. And actually, it's a problem which I, uh, I, don't th mm, I don't think it would be easy to solve. It is a pity that it wasn't brought to my attention earlier, I guess, <laughs> because I knew the kind of people who got this going. And unfortunately, I didn't ask them about it. But I'm sure that I could have asked Lion Sprague de Camp, who got much of the Norse mythology idea rolling, I could have said to him, uh, Sprague, uh, where do you get the stuff from? And he'd have told me. Um, and now I have to try and work it out by thinking, what's possible? What could he have read? Or another one. Here's, here's uh, dear, dear, we've got the goddesses, all right? Do we need to know about the goddesses? No. Look at this. This is a very rare item, by the way, a rare and precious item. The uh, journal, Science Fantasy, uh, is defunct long ago, and very few people, very few people, except me, have got a complete set of them. But all right, <laughs> what's the lead, the lead uh, story uh, in it? Here we go. It's um, Web of the Norns. By oh. Harry Harrison and Catherine McLean, both of whom I, I knew Harry Harrison very well and Catherine McLean quite well, and I could have asked them, but I didn't, of course, and both have since died. So uh, uh, finding the roots of the material is is quite difficult. Though I could have a go at it, actually. Uh, I've got a bibliography of early accounts of Norse mythology, which could probably uh, be narrowed down quite a bit. But uh, the thing is that. Um, this has all deviated, I think, from the original material because nobody knows the original material. Uh, they get their ideas from each other. There's now, it's all gone viral, as we say. Um, and that's, uh, uh, I won't say it's unfortunate because they've done pretty well with it, but it's, it's, uh, it's not authentic and it, it uh, hides a lot of information. Actually, there's another thing I have to, turn the light on so I can read a, a bit. There's uh, something in, um, ah, here we are, in, uh, in Richard's book, um, which I like very much. Uh, he says, um, um, recent criticism of Proto-Indo-European studies and mythology um, has tended to focus on what are deemed to be, A, the simplistic and idealized models applied by earlier researchers, and B, the perceived political and cultural biases of earlier researchers, bracket, while often ignoring the critics' own contemporary biases. Well, uh, it's a long sentence, so I won't go, go, go th th through to the end of it. 
But I think that is what has been happening in scholarship. Uh, I would put it this way. Um, first, uh, these are very sweeping statements. First, the most important political movement of the 19th century was romantic nationalism. This created Germany and Italy and other countries too, and also divided countries. But that was the most important political element. Later on, of course, this became extremely unpopular because of the nationalism. And so there became a, a kind of academic industry of debunking saying, oh, no, this is just romantic stuff. No, no, we don't have to take a note of that. This is all created by you know, nationalists. Um, and I think in the process, uh, the cultural biases of the 20th and 21st centuries meant that the baby got thrown out with the bathwater. There was a lot of romantic tripe produced, of course, by uh, very often by, by uh, 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 what should I say, nationalist philologists. But at the same time, it, it wasn't all like that. There really was a subject underneath that, and we should not have jettisoned it. So on the one hand, there's a kind of uh, popular image which has got quite out of control. And on the other, there's a, an academic world which is drawn back in horror and said, well, well, we, we don't want to get into that kind of stuff anymore. Now, that's no good. Uh, and I think, as I say, what I feel is that uh, the great things about Stephen's book and about, um, goodness me, I've got so many books here, and about Richard's book, are that they take us back to the original materials and they provide the material for a serious re-evaluation, um, which I think you know, I'm particularly uh, pleased, actually, uh, to see uh, not the goddesses, but 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 Woden. I would like to uh, to uh, study further the kind of things that Stephen has brought up, which I didn't know about. And if I didn't know about them, how many people did? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a that's a traditional Scottish question, you know. Uh, here's to us, was like us, damn few in their own deed. Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's uh, that's that's what struck me about both books. Could I say uh, again? I've mentioned uh, the, the Odin as a kind of Gandalf. Uh, the Matroni, what are they? Oh, easy, I could tell you. Um, uh, Terry Pratchett sorted that out, and he wasn't oh. original in it. Uh, he said that, of course, the three are um, the maiden, the mother, and the crone. And of course, there's always severe competition not to be the crone. But nevertheless, you have to have your three witches. Uh, uh, those are the three figures. And there they are the three stages, you might say. Um, the, uh, what shall I say, the pubescent female, the maternal female, the aged female. Um, and uh, and that, they, they uh, are assumed to be a kind of basis. You find them, they think you find them in, in covens and groups and whatnot all over the world. And they have now become a fixture in stories. Um, well, <laughs> well, I could see that this is uh, uh, this this has all gone a great deal too far. And I also don't know where it comes from. Whose idea was this? It will be some, oh, you know, probably Max Miller or somebody, uh, you know, back in the nineteenth century. And these things get picked up, and once picked up. Um, well, uh, they get elaborated, they become fixed. So um, our views on mythology <laughs> are, uh, certainly deserve serious reconsideration. Uh, and, uh, and I'm very glad that this, this, is, uh, th th this, this process has now been started. Um, well, I could say a lot more about... Uh, <laughs> about the uh, uh the pop familiarity uh, and the uh, the unfortunate excesses of it but that's that's my my initial comment